scare clothes off. You know, the shower with 12 people. Stripping down for the film's controversial shower scene wasn't as easy as Dina hoped it would be. The last time I was naked in front of so many people, there was women at the gym in the locker room, which is okay, because no one's looking, right? But for Paul Verhoeven, director of The Steamy Basic Instinct, he had no hang-ups about letting it all hang out. Come on, come on, what's the big deal? You just take your clothes off, what's the big deal? You Americans make such a big deal over this. It's, you know, so what, so what? You've seen, you've seen one, you've seen them all. And in an attempt to show Dina how easy it was, Verhoeven removed his own clothes. But this, you've got like, you know, seven guys, and you got eight girls, and you're just seeing things all over the place, hanging around, and <laughs> it's a little distracting. But military life has other distractions as well. Hey, guys, we should all get tattoos. Hey, yeah, come on, let's all get cut together. Why would I want a tattoo? Oh, what, your skin's too pretty? Come on, everyone's doing it. They don't negotiate. You know, they just go for the kill. Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of Starship Troopers. Now, you know, some people have said that the real stars of this film are not the spaceships or even the actors, but those things with all the legs. It's about big bugs. Really, really, really big bugs. These bugs are serious. People are going to go to see the bugs. <laughs> it's your worst nightmare. Have you seen the bugs? The bugs are pretty big, too. The real nasty, scary, ferocious, 14-foot warrior bugs are coming and slice and dice you up and cut you and just disgusting stuff. Oh, they're all horrible. They're all horrible. I'm afraid of them all. I'm like arachnophobic. I don't mind reptiles. I don't like bugs. Meet Phil Tippett, the Academy Award-winning creature effects supervisor. I got the first screenplay in 1992. Here it is, 1997. So it's been, a, you know, I haven't been involved every single day, you know, but I've been thinking about Starship Troopers for, you know, for the better part of five years. Tippett's resume reads like a history lesson in creature effects, from Star Wars to Jurassic Park. You know, the, the difference is I, I would, you know, characterize Jurassic Park had 50 some odd dinosaur shots, and uh, Starship Troopers has, you know, close to 250 bug shots. After a successful collaboration on RoboCop, Paul Verhoeven insisted on Phil Tippett for Starship Troopers. If Tippett hadn't been available, Verhoeven wouldn't have done the picture. Well, it's, it's certainly flattering, you know, that's, that's always nice to have someone say they won't do anything unless you're involved with it, too. But, you know, I think the, you know, we had a prior association, and, uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is there's not that many people that, that really know how to do this stuff. And Phil Tippett, who made all the bugs for us, um, for these kind of very precise scenes, made animatics so we could study the whole thing and then um, use that on the set if necessary. Tippett's work began on location with the actors, months before any of the bugs were animated. Either Paul or I would, would block out the action with these, you know, funny looking sticks that would give them the eyeliner. We'd, we'd rehearse, you know, four or five times to develop a choreography so that, you know, the, the troopers are shooting over here and their eyelines change and they're shooting over here. For accuracy, Tippett used everything from bug models to surveyor's tools. Oh, I thought there was a so we have to have these stand-in references and, and measuring devices that allow the actors to begin to uh, understand the timing. And, uh, John McLeod, are you ready? You know, we got involved with, with Paul very early on, both Craig Hayes you know, and myself, and Craig designed all the bugs. Craig Hayes, a veteran at Tippett Studios, spent years perfecting these horrific creatures. There were the eight or ten of these, you know, various characters that eventually we, you know, called out of, of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of drawings that Craig had done. The most brutal and certainly the most visible arachnids, simply because there are so many of them, are the warriors. These ones, are the, the warriors, of course, are more interesting because that's really what the movie is about, you know, because they are the mean ones. The warriors are uh, rend and tear and spite. But you have also these things that basically that, uh, that, that do stabbing, yeah? So this, this goes right, this, like that, goes right through your body. Ah! Yeah, that's good. Do it again. The warrior bugs owe their frightening realism in part to a device called the DID. Craig, you know, certainly worked uh, a, a great deal with Paul in, in trying to 
determine what that look was. And the whole time I would, you know, be sitting back trying to wonder how the hell are you going to make these things move around. Well, the DID or the digital input device, uh, originally known as the dinosaur input device, was kind of first fully developed for uh, the picture of Jurassic Park. In this case, a, uh, a skilled stop motion animator or puppeteer will be able to physically hold the, the object that is roughly configured to, to look like one of the bugs of the, of the picture and, and move it around in space. We built a device that would allow stop motion animators with 10, 15, 20 years of film experience to bring their talents to the computer without having to learn uh, the computer graphics software first. So we built a device that you could move around uh, physically and actually actuate a puppet. Thanks to the DID, the animator can breathe life into every bug. It's probably just getting lost. His head, go his head goes down, ding, 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 ding. Once the movements have been inputted, finer details are layered onto the bug. This model then would go to a pass where we would put lights and the textures on it, and we would end up with a picture, something like this, of the actual warrior bug. It's, it's a, an elaborate uh, you know, synthesis of animation and elements, uh, many, many different things. Being able to pull these, you know, thousands and thousands of, of bugs swarming across the landscape and, you know, into the fort and the, the troopers, you know, fighting them back is, uh, it's, uh, its scope and its scale is, is huge. And in this nightmare world of the future, there are other bugs besides the fearsome warriors. Their second cousins, the hoppers, are, are genetically engineered warriors. They do the same thing. They just fly and chop people's heads off. Then there are the tanker bugs. This is the tanker bug. It's one of the heavier duty bugs. A little bit difficult to see in a wireframe representation, but you get the idea. It's multi-legged. You know, the tanker bug is a tank with a, with a flamethrower on it uh, that spews out the, this, the viscous, you know, goo that, that melts people. And there are the plasma bugs. Plasma bugs are the big guns, the guns of Navarone or anti-aircraft missiles. And the odd thing about the plasma bugs is the peculiar place from which their weapons are released. It literally puts its head in the ground, sticks its butt in the air, and shoots plasma out of its butt. I'm sorry, I find that kind of funny. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, their ass is big, very big too, of course, otherwise they, they, what, they, what gets out of their ass is like enormous, it's like three times this table, you know. Regardless of the plasma bug's somewhat comical technique, the results are deadly. En breve, regresa con ustedes In Focus. Solo en E-Entertainment Television. Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of Starship Troopers. I'm Todd Newton, and I'm standing next to the world's largest model mover, and it was made especially for Starship Troopers. Now, coming up, we'll get a hint of the terrible power hidden beneath Planet P, and a chance for you to call one of these starships your very own. Johnny, I'm sorry it had to be your unit on P. That mission had a very low survival probability. The bugs laid a trap for us, didn't they? Elegant proof of intelligence, isn't it? I thought there might be a brain bug on P. You brain bug? In this hand-to-leg combat, who knew the Arachnid army had a commanding general calling the shots in this bug-infested war? I'm touching the, the, the brain bug, and it rears its ugly head, and I gave one of these looks. We want to capture uh, their brain, how they think, because um, we find out sort of halfway through the movie that, or maybe three quarters into the movie, that the bugs, what they do is, after they kill the humans, they suck their brains out. Can't go into brain suck. Very sensitive issue. <laughs> you don't approve. Well, too bad. 
We're in this for the species, boys and girls. But boys and girls in the real world can battle against their own alien insects. Starship Troopers action figures have been sighted at toy stores on planet Earth. The invasion has begun. To action figures, some members of the Starship Troopers cast had their own ideas. Your head's going to be this big <laughs> on your Barbie doll. <laughs> they make it to be the biggest head ever. <laughs> you and Patrick. Thank you so much for watching Behind the Scenes. I'm Todd Newton, and we'll see you next time. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. That was my first line. Let's go, Doc! <laughs> won't let go. Won't let go. Thank you. This is Patrick. <laughs> you you want to have a drink at the bar? Yeah. What drink some meat, Wait a second. Usted está disfrutando de E-Entertainment Television. Quédese con nosotros y vea a continuación Especiales E. Hola, yo soy Vicente, 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 caliente.